The Mystery Bus Stop by Susie Sawyer, art by Edwardian Taylor. Hurry, Marcus, Millie called to her brother. Marcus caught up just as the school bus ha- arrived. The doors opened and they got their first look at the new bus driver, Mr. Cross. There was no smile on his face. He just nodded slowly at them as they climbed the steps. Millie and Marcus sat together, three seats behind Mr. Cross. His arms were long and he was tall and a little hunched over. Millie watched his stern reflection in the mirror above him. She wondered if he ever smiled. I miss our old driver, she whispered. Yeah, this guy isn't as friendly, Marcus said. The bus traveled two more blocks, then stopped in front of an abandoned house. Hey, we don't usually stop here, whispered Millie. Mr. Cross opened the bus doors. Millie waited to see who would get on, but nobody did. Still, Mr. Cross nodded his head the way he had when she and Marcus boarded the bus. Then he closed the doors. Did you see that? Millie said. He just opened the doors and nodded at someone. But nobody got on. Marcus gulped. That was weird. The bus continued on the route and the usual kids got on. Mr. Cross nodded at each one. During school that day, Millie kept thinking back to what had happened that morning. It didn't make sense. At the end of the day, when she and Marcus got on the bus to go home, Marcus said, I think I figured it out. He probably stopped to pick up a ghost kid. A ghost kid, said Millie. Maybe Mr. Cross can see ghosts, Marcus said. No, said Millie, that's silly. But as they rode home, Millie thought about it. What else could it be? Why else would he open the doors? By the time they reached their stop, she decided Marcus was right. The next morning, Millie sat on the edge of her seat, waiting to see if the ghost kid would board the bus again. They drove two blocks, and Mr. Cross stopped the bus in front of the abandoned house. He opened the doors, leaned forward with a nod of his head, and then closed them. It happened again, said Millie. I told you, said Marcus. Ghost kid. The next two days, the same thing happened. The bus stopped, the doors opened, Mr. Cross nodded, and the doors closed. Millie began to panic. Who is this ghost kid? What if he's sitting next to us? Marcus said, I think you should ask Mr. Cross about it. Me, said Millie. Why not you? No way, Marcus said. On Friday morning, Millie waited with Marcus at the bus stop. Her heart raced. When the doors opened, she climbed the steps toward Mr. Cross, and he nodded his head slowly. Millie and Marcus took their seat. You didn't ask, said Marcus. I'm not ready, said Millie. The bus drove two blocks and stopped. Millie's stomach fluttered. Mr. Cross opened the doors and nodded. At nobody. Finally, Millie spoke. Excuse me, Mr. Cross? Mr. Cross looked up into his mirror at her. Marcus slid down in his seat. Who gets on the bus at this stop every morning? she asked. Mr. Cross put the bus in park and said, Please come up here for a moment. Millie looked at Marcus, then walked to the front of the bus. Mr. Cross said, Do you see anyone getting on the bus? No, said Millie. What do you see? Mr. Cross pointed outside. Millie looked through the open doors. A boarded up house, she said. Then she noticed the big clock tower at the end of the block peeking out over the roof of the house. And the clock tower. That's right. I check the time each morning so I know I'm running on schedule. Millie paused. But I've seen you nodding hello to someone when you stop here. Mr. Cross laughed. I'm not nodding. I'm so tall that I have to bend down to see the clock. Millie breathed a sigh of relief. That makes sense. Good, said Mr. Cross. Now go back and tell your brother because he he looks like he's seen a ghost.